in the studio. What's the latest, Ahimai? <laughs> Good morning, Nigeria, and welcome to Kataki Social. I am Ahimai Maiza, your anchor on this segment. Here we spotlight the issues shaping conversations in the Nigerian social media. The governor of Kogi State, Yaya Bilo, was trending yesterday on Twitter. Is the governor planning to leave the APC? Has it performed well enough to be re-elected by the people of Kogi State? These were some of the concerns we saw in the social media yesterday as Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello was trending on Twitter. We will be taking a look at some of the details of that trend this morning, how Nigerians are reacting to the prospects of Governor Yaya Bello coming back as Governor of Kogi State. Sahar reporters yesterday in a report uh, told us that a group in Kogi State, the APC, let's go on very quickly and take a look at uh, that report by Sahar reporters in the next uh, slide, step down support for Bello's second term, ambition. Kogi APC petitions Buhari. Uh, let's go on to the next slide and take a, a look at the details of that report, which was filed by Sa reporters yesterday. In the petition signed by Alex Kadiri, the convener of the Kogi APC Stakeholders Forum, the forum said Yaya Bello is an individual who lacks leadership abilities and is known for owing salaries, pensions, and gratuities. The pension rate, the petition rate rather, Governor Yaya Bello was never elected by the good people of Kogi State. The death of Abubakar Aoudou made it possible for Bailo to be Kogi State Governor. He has shown everyone that he lacks leadership abilities. He can fight for the rights and privileges of Kogi people. We request you to step down your support for the candidature of Governor Yaya Bailo for the forthcoming election in Kogi State. If the party fields him as a candidate, we are sure of losing the state to the opposition. The Kogi APC stakeholders forum uh, in a petition to President Buhari yesterday is saying that the president should step down his support for Yaya Bello of uh, Kogi State. And uh, But a couple of days ago, three days ago actually, one of his aides, his new media aide, Benga Lorunpomi, tweeted and said, by every known human development indicator, Governor Yaya Bello has done well as leader of Kogi State. His offenses are, one, refusal to conform to your idea of a young governor. Two, refusal to spend 90% of funds on 3% of the people. Three, 100% loyalty to President Buhari. Keep wailing. And he attached this video to that uh, tweet. Let's take a look at this video very quickly. Let me state clear here that in Kogi State, especially those of us that are saddled with the responsibility of steering the ship, today we are concerned about our state. No politics is at the corner. And there are a lot of noise and misinformations are out there. But what I am concerned about is to continue to do the work while the whalers continue to wail. The people and the citizens of Kogi State and the residents of Kogi State and our well-wishers out, wishers out there understand exactly the enormity of this job and our best that we've been putting forward to ensure that we move Kogi State to the next level. And by the special grace of God, come 27th January 2020, we invite all of you for our swearing in by the special grace of God. Okay, Governor Yaya Bello speaking there. Miss Kazola one tweet and said, Yaya Bello is owing 38 months salaries. That's not the news. The news is that Yaya Bello in 38 months, three years and two months, has collected 131 trillion naira as allocation. This is unthinkable. Miss Kazola one tweeted. And then from the PDP Vanguard, we saw this a tweet. For those of you that are claiming the outgoing governor of Kogi has no project to commission since the inception of his administration could be lying. Here's Kogi State's governor, Yaya Bello, unveiling one of the colossal projects he executed in the state. Let's take a look at that project according to the PDP Vanguard. Uh, okay, so that's the photograph of, according to the PDP Vanguard, the only project that Yaya Bello has unveiled since he became governor of Kogi State. Let's go on and take a look at more reactions on uh, Kogi State governor Yaya Bello was trending yesterday on Twitter. Mazi Noel Eze tweeting said, in the same country, no party would give Yaya Bello a rerun ticket. Sadly, Nigeria is not the same country. Uh, Mazi Noel is a tweeting there yesterday. Henry Sheet said, no word in Africa deserves Yaya Bello as his counselor. And we got uh, more reactions yesterday on this issue. Let's go on very quickly uh, from Senator Dino Melaya. Actually, we saw this tweet. Uh, Kogi State for sale. Soon as Yaya Bello has concluded plans to borrow 32 billion naira from Stalin Bank. If Stalin Bank makes the mistake of giving Akotileta this money, 
we will go to court because there is no compliance with our extant laws. The bank should expect massive protests. Senator Dino Melai tweeting, and then from DJ Adeonju, it is better to have an old man on a wheelchair at the helm of affairs than to have some youths in leadership position. Example is Yaya Bello. But the Yaya Bello supporter firing shots at Deja Deonju, Shamshuddin A.Y. Twitter said, Yaya Bello will be elected governor of Kogi State and there's nothing anyone can do about it. I just pity Deja Deonju. If he enters Kogi, hmm, Yaya Bello will give him the medicine to his madness. Shamshuddin A.Y. Twitter. And then we see this, saw this report also, the Oni, Oinoi of Igberaland is saying, I supported Yaya Bello, but he's a different thing today. Uh, this was the cable reporting this. Uh, let's take a look at the details of this report. The Oinoi of Igberaland is saying that, okay, let's take a look at that report. Abdurrahman Ado Ibrahim, Oinoi of Igberaland says Yaya Bello, governor of Kogi, is being misled by money and extremely wrong people around him. Ibrahim said Bello has lost the goodwill of the people and it will be difficult to convince them to vote him for a second term in office. Speaking in an interview with Daily Trust, the traditional ruler said he supported Bello in 2015 because his assessment of the governor was positive. But he is a different thing today. According to him, Bello does not listen to the counsel of traditional leaders, but he gave more time to those who idolize him. The Oinoye of Ibrahim land, Abdurrahman Ado Ibrahim, uh, was quoted to have said. And then we also saw this uh, headline from Al Jazeera newspaper, Kogi 2019, Yaya Bello in the eye of the storm, set to dump APC, his secret meeting with a court party, Oshibajo Oshomole, rat for candidates. Well, that was from the Al Jazeera newspaper yesterday. And then uh, Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello has actually said that he's not leaving the APC, that they're just mere rumors. Okay, we move on from that issue to this issue that is uh, concerning to a lot of people in the social media, especially residents of Abuja, the raid on Abuja nightclubs. This has happened uh, increasingly over the past uh, uh, few weeks. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the concerns that have been flooding the social media from a Twitter user, King Midas, tweeting at MeQuest. I just heard those FCTA people that raided Caramello last weekend did the same to Beer Band and Crystal Lounge last night. What is happening in Abuja, please? And then got a response to that tweet from uh, Eddie Madaki, who said the FCT minister, former head honcho at Hatch Commission, doesn't have any tolerance for sinful indulgences perpetrated by consenting adults in shady alcohol selling establishments. Just speculating here, Eddie Mark Madaki tweeted, and then uh, from Matt Obono, who actually did a thread on uh, this uh, incident, said, as I type, 70 girls were arrested and brought to Otaku police station last night. This is in addition to the ones who were arrested on Friday night. Their offense, clubbing, and in some instance, prostitution. Some have been assaulted with injuries in sensitive parts of their bodies, Matobono tweeted. And then he continued uh, in that uh, line of thought. He said, one of the ladies arrested has a two-month-old baby. She wasn't allowed to breastfeed her baby by CRO in charge on duty, despite continuous plea and missed tears. He took the intervention of a female police officer who called the DPO to overrule the decision of the inspector at the time. And then he continued in that thread and said, The joint task force that arrested some of these girls have been allegedly molesting and assaulting them. Some even showed the bruises and bleeding in the sensitive parts of their bodies. A capital city like Abuja needs to define its rules if it wants to be conservative or liberal. And Matt Obono continued in that set of tweets and said, We have foreign investors coming to Abuja to do business. We have foreign development partners who want to help us with the many problems we have. Our society cannot be run like this if we must make progress. And then one more tweet from him. He said that choose a position, make clear the rules and enforce them rightly. Some of the police officers I interacted with have said that some of the people in the joint task force even steal the phones of the suspects. And in a, con in a concluding note, Amato Bono said, we need to legalize prostitution once and for all. But the question is, which legislator we want to sponsor such bill without a backlash from our holier than thou's? Amato Bono tweeted over the weekend, Olayin Kaleri in a tweet said, Abuja fast becoming a Sharia capital? Waiting be this reading of nightclubs and arrest of ladies seen as not dressing decently. And then uh, from Jibril Ibrahim 17 tweeting said, It is scandalous that the police in Abuja would arrest 100 women just because they went to a nightclub. No man in the nightclubs was arrested. We have a constitution that guarantees human rights and equality. What about arresting bandits and kidnappers? Jibril Ibrahim tweeting and went into that conversation. And yes, 
Episode 3 of Game of Thrones Season 8 has broke the internet completely, shattered every record, unimaginable, any, any imaginable record you can think of. This is the biggest thing right now in the world. This is what everybody is talking about. And we're going to be devoting the rest part of the conversation to Game of Thrones Episode 3 Season 8. A lot of highlights from that episode, that groundbreaking episode, it has been described as the single greatest battle on television. And yes, it was just that. And joining me this morning to have a conversation on this is Brian Dennis and Ada Campbell. Hello, good morning, Brian. Good morning, Mr. <laughs> Fix. Good Ada. to see you. Nice to have you on Kakaki Social this Hi, morning. Hi, good morning. Thanks for coming. Thanks okay, for having let's take us. Okay, let's step forward a bit. So, okay. we're discussing Game of Thrones this morning. Yeah, I'm excited about <laughs> we it. We are. We're excited about it. Yeah. So, you are one of those who woke up 3 a.m. on Monday morning to what Game of Thrones? 2 a.m. actually. 2 a.m. actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was actually up till like 2 a.m. and I watched, I watched the entire uh, episode and you know that there's really there's really trouble when Femi Fanny Kayode is tweeting at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. <laughs> saying that seen many battles on screen but the best and most riveting is the one i just watched in season eight episode three of game of thrones the 18 minute battle of winterfell is powerful frightful and apocalyptic thank god for aria kudos hbo game of thrones battle of winterfell aria was a big surprise ada did you see that coming i did not see it coming she was the only surprise i think um on the episode for yesterday, um, Monday was it yesterday? Well, Monday morning. It was and Monday there was, morning. There was a repeat on Mnet yesterday. Yesterday as well. 10. Yes. Yes. Um, but I mean, I was a bit underwhelmed because a lot of people that we expected to die did not die. Did not die. <laughs> so like, I expected more deaths. It's Game of Thrones style. All your faves are going to die. Um, but I'm really, really <laughs> glad that Arya was the one that was chosen to kill the Night King. Okay, let's let's uh, go on and take a look at uh, more details from our conversation this morning. Uh, let's fast forward very quickly. Uh, from uh, this uh, Twitter user, Mark Schutz, they captured this moment that Arya dealt with the Night King. <laughs> okay, uh, let's, let's take a look at this clip very quickly and then we'll come back to this. Okay, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what is going to happen to Arya right now? Okay, this is another moment when people were watching how they reacted the moment that Arya, yeah, you know, stabbed the, the king, the, the night king. Let's take a look at this one. <laughs> oh my god. And that oh was exactly god. how I feel. That, yeah. that was as it, it was crazy. It was epic, epic moment. And in a Nigerian house, we also watch it. This Twitter is uh, saying Junior captured that moment as well. Somewhere here in Nigeria, the reaction when Arya killed the Night King. Uh, let's take a look at this one also. Brian, Brian Dennis and Ada Campbell. Amazing. See, this was like the World Cup. The yes. last time people felt this way was like at the World Cup finals. We've never seen anything like this from, from any movie. Not even 24 pull this stunt. No. Nope. Not even prison break. This 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 is just amazing. Uh, Royalty also tweeted and said this visual felt so good. Had to pause, rewind and record. She literally proved she is as leader with her right as her left. Very few people can do this. Now that's a five star rating. This is enough justification for the one billion dollars Game of Thrones made in its first week. Wow. One billion dollars. Wow. That's a lot of money. That's a lot, yeah, of, money. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. Okay, let's take a look at the characters. Some of the, some of the key characters that uh, made a showing. Liana Momont. Liana Momont. I wasn't so happy that she died. Really? Yeah, yeah I, I was. Yeah. I was. I I there, think were other, there were other people that. No, but I think they gave her a glorious death. A glorious ending. Like, yeah, she had a glorious ending. Yeah, she, she if there the was giant. any way for her to die, I mean, I feel like they were pandering to the fans by killing her in that way. Because really, what has she done? But that was amazing for her character. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Okay, and uh, Tion Greyjoy. I made a comeback. <laughs> yeah. After yeah. all he went through. <laughs> I, I was directed from Rick back to Great Joy. And yes. Yeah, it was it was an epic ending for him. He over the years he had evolved from a good person to a bad person mm -hmm. and then he back went out person. perfectly. Yeah. He didn't just sit back and watch the night king come to Bran. 
he went to die purposefully and it was a good death was a good death but he's, good he's one of my favorites i'm going to miss him of course yes yeah. yes uh, it was it was quite interesting how he kept bran alive yeah until yeah. the king showed up and uh, you know he did he did a great job mm -hmm. And am I the only one who was disappointed that Jon Snow didn't have a plan? <laughs> Jon Snow had no plan. I think I he think was just <laughs> shouting at the dragon. <laughs> ah, like <laughs> I think the initial plan was that they were just going to use their dragons and burn out the Night King and mm -hmm. his army, but they didn't know that we'll the come, Night King we'll had his own to, plan. We'll yeah. Come to yeah. very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but I was disappointed in Jon Snow. I, I, what what do, you, what do you think? Jon never has a plan, to be honest. Um, he, I mean. The strategy was weird from the beginning. They had the Dothrakis killed yes. in the first like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, why? <laughs> um, and then he was just running up and down. And then the bits where he was running towards the Night King um, and the Night King rose the dead. That yes. was really, really cool. That was cool. And, and, and you see, again, talking about plants, who comes up with a plan to put people in the crypt? You are dealing with the Night King who has the power to raise the dead. And you keep people in the crypt? <laughs> Where the dead are buried. Yeah. You guys all happen. True, true. And coming to Tyron Lannister, mm -hmm. you saw that moment when Tyron kissed Sansa's hand. Like, God. well, they used to be married. So, <laughs> they used to be married. They used to be married. Yeah, that moment for me, I thought that was over for them. Yeah. Yes. When he did that, I thought they were going to be killed. It yeah. needed to be over. <laughs> it, like, they should have died. They Both of them. Died. They should have. There's no reason why they're alive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Kalisi too, I don't know. Kalisi just depended so much on her dragons. Yeah. yeah. I think beyond her, beyond her dragons, like you said, she didn't really have much of a strategy mm -hmm. uh, to beat the Night King. And the Night King. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go on and take a look at that. That moment when after Kalisi's dragon breathed fire on the Night oh, King. The yes. Night King just... You know, I was expecting something yes. to happen. That was so And cool. the Night King just comes out like with a smirk on his face. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Is, that, is, is that, that what you have? have? Yeah. Okay, this was Brian. You were tweeting that Liana Mormont kills more white workers than Jon Snow in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> you are shading Jon Snow. Yeah. Okay, let's go on very quickly mm -hmm. and again and see uh, some of the highlights. There was a tweet from uh, Lemona Onoja mm -hmm. where he where he was actually surprised. You know, at the moment that the crypt, the dead in the crypt rose, I think he didn't see that coming. Let's go on very quickly onto the next uh, uh, slides. Uh, let's go on. Okay, but uh, we saw this uh, tweet also from uh, Sanseria. Everything you did brought you where you are right now, where you belong, home. Tion Grejo died as a good man at his home, protecting his family. I yeah. uh, see talking about what Tion Grejo did. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go on very quickly. Let's go on to the next uh, set of tweets. Uh, I was Lemon and not just shocked. <laughs> the dead in the crypt woke up. <laughs> yes, they woke up. They woke up. <laughs> what do you expect? Well, the Night King is the, is, the, is the leader of the army of the dead, and the dead when they rise, they will rise first from the crypt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that was the moment after Daenerys uh, dragon uh, <laughs> breathed fire on the Night King and the guy was like, did, you, did you see that coming? Yeah, I, th I think it's, uh, over, over the time a lot of fan theories have uh, insinuated that the Night King himself is Targaryen. Okay. So it's, that's it's true. possible yeah. that that's why he wasn't born. He wasn't born. Yeah. Okay, and th there's, so much, there's so much drama about this last season of Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling the battle is not even over yet. Uh, let's go on because right now I saw a tweet from uh, Mojua. He said sworn enemies came together to defeat an enemy that threatened all of them. It's fiction, but it's enough reason to see that people can disagree generally, but agree to solve big problems. And this is one great lesson from Game of Thrones actually. Mm -hmm. But there is a missing link in this whole equation. Where is Cecil Lannister? In bed. <laughs> Having a Sleeping. glass of wine. I don't trust, I don't trust Cecil Lannister and Jamie. Mm -hmm. Those guys might just be up to something. What do you guys think? Is Cersei going to give up the Iron Throne just like that? Um, I, I mean, I, I, I think Cersei is definitely planning her own battle because mm -hmm. um, she wants the Iron Throne as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll see next week. We'll see what happens with that. But there's a battle coming again. There's another battle coming. Yes. I suspect. Yes. I suspect that. Okay, we'll take a look at this video now as so we wrap up. Uh, GOT Activity brought this video and said the Game of Thrones cast talking about the moment Arya kills the Night King. Let's take a look. I think that's such a, a nice little full circle thing as well that that's the knife that was destined to kill Bran and here it is saving him. Yeah, it's like a, an iconic moment. You know, the fall of the dead. It's exactly what you need. <laughs> like, out of the air, she like takes him down. It's so good, it's so good. Perfect. I think it's a, it's an inspired move. 
Um, you've always been waiting as to what purpose Arya's assassin skills are going to lead to, and it's for the most important purpose. Reading what I get to achieve and Arya's whole purpose in this world and everything she's trained for comes down to this one episode. It's just amazing. And it just, it was beautiful. It's poetry. And I'm grateful that it was me and not Ken. <laughs> Epic, epic movie. Okay, so as we very quickly, what's what's your take home from Game of Thrones so far? We've not seen it all yet, but what's your what's your take home from this whole movie? Um, I, I, it's a phenomenon. It's amazing that we are in this time and we're experiencing something as amazing as this. But I also enjoy the fact that they took you know a break from the politics um, and the houses trying to fight for the throne and came together to kill this one enemy that mm -hmm. was going to destroy everyone, everyone yeah. so that is a big takeaway for big me take definitely. Okay, Brian very quickly yeah. well uh, it's the biggest show ever on TV and uh, the takeaway is that um, I look at Arya Stark's story uh, a girl mm -hmm. and who her dad believed in gave her a teacher and then she went through all that journey of being blind learning how to fight while she was blind, coming back home to defend her home. It's like, it's like a process for me. And it's amazing that she went through that process to kill the Night King yeah. instead of those that we assumed yeah. were the most suited to kill the Night King, like yeah. Jon Snow, yeah. who yeah. dedicated his entire life entire to the Night life. Watch. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us this thank morning, Brian. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Adam thank Campbell, you. as well. Thank you. So, yes, we'll be having a conversation about Game of Thrones, episode three of season eight. It's not over yet. There are, I think, three more episodes to go. But this is where we draw the curtain this morning. So, follow the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We have our WhatsApp channel as well. We have WhatsApp groups running already. And, hey, our WhatsApp guys, you guys should stop fighting. <laughs> okay, handy over now to TV and Chikodinaka.